Lesson 6, Creation. The Bible begins with, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1.1 1, 1. one of the most disputed doctrines of today is creation. The theory of evolution has permeated not only secular institutions but also entering into churches. The basis of creation is essential to all other biblical doctrines. If we cannot trust God on this, how can we trust him with the salvation of our souls? Creation of the universe. Who created the universe? Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Nehemiah 9.6. Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that are therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worship thee. In how many days did God finish his acts of creation? Genesis 1, 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was good, and the evening and morning were the sixth day. Remember, the seventh day God rested. That is not one of the days of creation. Upon what basis do we understand that the universe was created by the word of God? Hebrews eleven three, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which were seen were not made of things which do appear. What does the universe that God created reveal about himself? Romans 1, 20. For the invisible things of him from creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Creation of man. After whose image was God created? Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female he created him. From what did God form man? Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into the nostrils of the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. What did God breathe into the man's nostrils? Genesis 2, 7. He breathed into them the breath of life. The breath of life is the spirit. That means the means by which one can experience fellowship with God. When man sinned, the fellowship between God and man was broken, and the spiritual understanding was darkened. See Ephesians 4.18. Man in this condition cannot understand spiritual matters. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Over what did, man, did God give man dominion? Genesis 1.26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Where did God place man whom he formed? Genesis 2.8 And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. What commandment did God give to man? Genesis 2.16-17 and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may eat freely of, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. From the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. How was this commandment disobeyed? Genesis 3, verses 1-13 through 13. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw the tree was good for food, and was pleasant to eat to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. When the eyes of both were open, and they knew they were naked, and sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons, they, and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. The Lord said unto Adam, called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and was afraid, because as naked I hid. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee, that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gave me, 
She gave me the tree, and I did eat. The woman said, that, and uh, God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? The woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So this is how sin entered into the human race. When God created man, he created him as a free moral agent. He had a choice, freedom of choice, and could choose between either good or evil. God did not create robots to disobey automatically. He gave us that ability. What was the result of disobedience? Romans 5.12 Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Why did God create man in the universe? Isaiah 43.7 Even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, and I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Revelation 4.11 Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. The vital importance of believing in a recent creation. If one is to take the literal view of the Bible, including creation and the deluge, or the flood of Noah, can one come to the conclusion that the earth, let alone the universe, is billions of years old? No. There is absolutely no intellectually honest way to come to that conclusion if you're taking the Bible to be true. If you do take the Bible to be true, the earth is approximately 6,000 years old. And we also know, if you're taking the Bible literally, each of the days in Genesis in the creation story are literal days. That is the way that Moses intended that for the original audience. And we also know God gave us the symbol of evening and morning being the days, so he set this up correctly so we understood it wasn't a time period, an error, or each day being a billion years. It's not that way if you take the Bible literally. If evolutionism is true, can we say that God is really the God of grace and mercy after all? For he seems to create a world filled of animals and suffering and dying for a billion years, and he did so for no apparent reason whatsoever, assuming that his ultimate goal was to create human beings to fellowship with him. No, we cannot. The Bible says that death is the penalty of sin. Sin did not enter the world until Adam and Eve. So if you believe in evolution, you believe God lied about that. If evolutionism is true, can we really trust the Bible as an authoritarian guide in all matters of salvation, heaven, and everlasting life? For as wrong in these important matters of science and history, which we supposedly can check for ourselves using usual criteria scientific and historical investigation. No, we would not be able to trust the Bible. If the Bible has lied about this basic doctrine, then nothing else matters in the Bible. If the very first chapter, first two chapters, are lies, the rest of the book is a lie. If evolution is true, can death really be the uh, wages of sin, as the Bible says, for violence, pain, and death reigned in the world long before sin came in, and hence God directly responsible for this cruel regime, not Adam? No. Because if evolution is true, then death existed prior to Adam, and therefore it's not the penalty of sin. If evolutionism is true, is the Bible false when it teaches Jesus Christ is a creator because he, before he became our Savior? John chapter 1, verse 1 through 3 and verse 10, Colossians 1, verse 16, and many, many other passages in the Bible, as well as the other doctrines about Jesus Christ. Yes, if evolution is true, Jesus Christ is not our creator, and therefore the Bible also lies about him being our Savior. Because if we can't trust it on one, we can't trust it on the other. If evolutionism is true, and still more significantly, if physical human death was not really an important part of the penalty of sin, then was all the agonizing, cruel physical death of Christ on the cross really unnecessary to pay the penalty and a gross miscarriage of justice on God's part? If evolution is true, then Christ's death was in vain and paid for nothing, because death wasn't the penalty for sin. you got to realize that. If you accept evolution in any form, then you're saying Christ's death was meaningless. If God's word was wrong about creation, about the meaning of Christ's death, does it become obvious that his prophecies and promises concerning the future are of no value either? 
That's correct. If we cannot trust the Bible about the basic doctrine of creation, we cannot trust it in any other doctrine, commandment, or prophecy. Nothing in the Bible can be trusted if evolution is true. If evolutionism is true, does that therefore remain any viable reason to believe in God at all, and at least not in a personal, loving, omniscient, omnipotent, holy, righteous God that the Bible makes him out to be? No. If evolution's true, that those descriptions are false about God. It would make God into an impersonal, distant, and imperfect God, unlike the Bible. He'd be more like those gods of various different mythologies. Now remember, when I talk about evolution, I'm talking about macroevolution, not micro. Microevolution has been scientifically documented. It's changes within a species over time. Uh, many times this is adaptation to environments, natural selection. Macroevolution is the evolution of one species into another one. Scientifically, that has never been proven in any form or sense. In fact, the lack of evidence disproves it. Hopefully, this has been an important message for you and something that will help you in your spiritual life.